poverty, hatred, abuse. Just a few words that defined B.J. Garrett's world in Tyler, Texas. B.J. was 11 when her mother began prostituting her just to pay the bills. I have very vivid memories of my mom um, physically having men come in to my bedroom at night and being told things like, I, like I've paid for you, you're gonna lay there. Even more tragic, the sexual abuse had started years earlier with her father. My dad doing things that no dad is supposed to do to his little girl. I had no healthy concept of love. Love was very sexual to me. Just remember feeling very ugly, very alone, very um, just unwanted. BJ's mother finally stopped prostituting her when BJ got pregnant by her boyfriend and had a baby girl when she was 15. But becoming a mom also gave BJ something else she needed. I wanted to be wanted, and having a baby fulfilled that. She was going to be perfect and lovely and, and love me unconditionally. After a few years experiencing her daughter's love, BJ got pregnant again. But now, with a new boyfriend, things were different. All he said was, I don't want to be a dad. And I just thought, there's no way I will ever let my child feel, even for a moment, the way I felt my whole life. I really thought I was doing the very best thing for my baby by having an abortion. But what she had convinced herself was a merciful decision only brought more guilt and self-condemnation. It was like a, just a little section of my heart was to never beat again. I was the dirty, ugly, gross, vile human um, that now just put this ugly cherry on top by ending my own baby's life. At 19, BJ had another child, a son. Now a struggling mother of two, she decided there was only one way for her to make enough money. I was mom by day and, um, and, and stripper, prostitute by night. My body had been used my whole life to pay for things, but it was always forced upon me. Now I was in control. Every song, every dollar, every set, I just got more cold-hearted. Two years later, at 21, BJ would get pregnant again, this time by a client. By then, her heart had become so hardened, she ended the pregnancy. My heart was just an ice ball. I was so far removed from the reality of, of, of anything, especially that required emotion. A few years later, BJ reconnected with a childhood friend at a wedding. Jay was loving and fun, much different than the other men she had dated. It wasn't long before, again, she got pregnant. And so when I found out that I was pregnant by this guy that I genuinely had fallen in love with, I just thought, wow, I blew it. Um, it's over. I had the ugly cry going and He's like, what is going on? What's wrong? And I just kind of blurt out that I was pregnant. And, and he starts jumping on our bed and hooping and hollering. He's like, I'm going to be a dad. I'm going to be a dad. The two married a week later. BJ stopped having sex with other men, only stripping when they needed the money. Then after moving to Bullard, Texas, BJ took a job at a tea shop owned by a Christian couple. They were loving and just normal people that love Jesus. They began to love me and pour into me. They didn't know any of my past. And, um, and they finally invited me to church. Church seemed like a safe place. So BJ began attending regularly. One night at an altar call, she prayed, asking for God's forgiveness. Nobody else knew my ugly. Again, like not my husband, not my coworkers, but I knew all of it. I knew every ugly thing. I was just begging God to be real and, and just begging Him to change me and to, and to fix me and to forgive me. But in the days that followed, part of her still couldn't let go of the guilt, anger, and self-loathing. That would change the day she was baptized. 
Like I just always felt so dirty, so ugly, so gross, so vile, and now I'm clean. It was like I could physically feel all of that ugly being washed away. In time, BJ was able to accept God's forgiveness. She also forgave her parents and even saw her husband Jay and her father give their lives to Christ. BJ now serves as the executive director of Christ-Centered Abortion Recovery and Education as she hopes that no child ever feels unwanted. And the reality is that I had never been unwanted. Love should never cost you anything, but real love cost Jesus everything so that we could experience pure love. You know, when I hear stories like BJ's, I think how unfair it seems that a child has no control over what they're born into. You know, who understands the history of her mother, the history of her father? It doesn't really matter. I mean, in the end, she was just so wounded and so scarred because she came from traumatic beginnings. And maybe that's happened to you, too. And, you know, sometimes you just feel like you're drowning, like you can't, you can't push yourself up to the top above the water and get air anymore. And then you just stop caring. But I love when she's so candid about the emotion she felt when she prayed at church. And she said, I was just begging God to be real, to be who he said he was, and really to love me. Isn't that what we're all most mystified by about God? How could you love me? All of us know, whether our spouses know, whether our children know, whether our friends know, we know the ugly, don't we? We know all the stuff inside, the thoughts, the feelings, uh, often what's evidenced on the outside. I think it's what makes God's love so unbelievably amazing is that when he looks at us, he sees us as his kids. He sees us invited to the party. We're not standing outside the window looking in and feeling like we're not invited. We're invited. And it takes a while in life, I think, for us to understand that we get to choose, that it's not a matter of God having to prove that he's real. He's already real. He's already there. He's been waiting the whole time for you, waiting, the creator of the universe. And so in a moment like this, like right now, right this moment, you hear the story of a woman who was desperately lost and who said yes to God changing her heart, to God forgiving her sin, to God helping her forgive herself, to understanding who she was really created to be. And there's a freedom that comes from that. It's the freedom she talked about when she was baptized, all that garbage coming off of her so she could receive Jesus and in receiving him received a whole new identity. If you are in your life in a stuck place, if your heart is hard, if you feel like you could never come up for air one more time, do it one more time. Ask Jesus to come into the midst of your mess and to change you. If you'd like to pray with someone, our line is toll free. It's always available, 1-800-700-7000. Call, there's a friend on the other end of the line. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.